smoke cloud oh from God. Molly. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God. Oh. Vitality are now left in the three versus one. That's a great shot from Malaysia, and that is not going to be enough. Hello and welcome to another edition of FPS Friday Esports in 30. I'm Marissa, this is Zurich, and today I think we need to be a bit more chill because uh, we've got to match the atmosphere of the CS Summit 4. Am I right, Zurich? Yeah, I'm already, you know, two hits in. It's Friday. <laughs> You're already super chill. I'm super chill. Um, okay, but you, <laughs> but you were feeling so sick all week. I was, I was. The uh, medicinal, um, you know, advantages. Yeah, yeah. Helped. I mean, just to be clear, everybody, we're talking about two hits of cough medicine. That's right. That's right. And that's why he's feeling better. Yep, yep. That's totally it. Super. Um, Wait, you know, just super chill. Super chill. But right you now. saw the CS Summit, obviously. You enjoyed it because it was just nothing but entertainment yes, the entire time. Very funny. All yeah. of the the entire event was just hilarious. Like yeah. there was nothing to be really taken too seriously. You know, like Vitality obviously played, uh, you know, like the top of their game yeah. very seriously, but. That's fine. You can do that too. But well, we can also have fun. Yeah, yeah. But I, th I feel like most of the summit is just like for the players to, you know, get along, like mm -hmm. talk to each other. Like imagine all the strat talks in the back. Like for everybody's sure. just like, hey, what do you guys do when, when you know, like this team rushes B? And it's yeah. like, oh, well, this is usually our rotation and stuff like that. Like I'm sure that is what happens it's in the back chill. of the summit. Just bros having a good time. Yeah. I mean, we have to talk about the sketches, laughs, and frags from the summit. We've got the amazing Sapphire calling in in just one second. But until then, here's a look back at the best plays from the event. Anticipating Banana from the looks of the guy from oh. here. It's going to be Saiwu that rings out first. No oh. way. Seconds. He's had enough. He's going to keep going through it. He doesn't really care, does it's he? It's for Eric. Oh. Oh. He wants the ball. Oh. Get him out of here. He's Get the right closer. Hit. I was checking in at the airport, and I had my only pair of glasses, and I had no reply. Oh, oh my oh. God. Oh. That that is, we love this Fuck the story, dude. <laughs> Holy oh. shit. No, no, man. <laughs> Duelies are legit. Nitro. Oh. Don't be so Yeah, like yeah, I'm gonna die on this hill. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here we go. Yeehaw! Yeah, that's that pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Pretty nice. Oh, oh JK is ass on his last limbs. Trading blows. Oh my goodness, oh, he's flying. He's hurt. He's battered. He's bruised. He's looking for a spray. He might get this one. That'll Woo! help quite a bit. He can no! move for a position. Kills the up out of the round. It's 1v2. Now Spuya burning. He's got to fight for it his life. He's time. like R. Kelly at the moment trying to beat this lawsuit. It's He's going to look for the yob shot. No! The round is over. Oh my god, if they stick it, they're going to win. He can go in for the kill right now. Oh! He gets it the smoke. Oh my god, Spuya! He's got that, I guess, smoke cloud oh from Molly. Oh my, oh my god, what the fuck was that? Anyway. <laughs> Henry, again, talking about himself. Oh! And Zywoo with the double. <laughs> Shutting the down ace. the B site. Only needs one more. Oh, there he's, he's got gonna it get all. in. See the side, yeah. But I also feel like that. Oh, yeah, boy. So, okay. Baby, baby. Oh, 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 they needed that one. Twist can still do this. Low HP on both ends players. <gasps> That's so risky. Three bullets. Oh, oh dear. Oh, my Here God. we go. That's sick. Time not important anymore. The bomb's been planted. Twist versus X7. Doesn't know he's out though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he seems oh, to be aware. No. Or he's down against himself. Oh boy. He has a block. And he's pretty close up. So let's see. That's a first kill. Oh my god. Twist, this, boy. twist so on one HP. He's gonna find that flank. He's looking he's for the last one. He's got one HP. He's got one HP. He can push it. Get it. It's got he's playing with the headshot angle. There's a chance here. No! Oh my god, oh, right the body. No. He wins this. You put the dress on? <laughs> Take it back. Oh, Jason, it's sorry, right. it's on It's on the broadcast. No! Oh! Let's go! Let's go for the dress! Oh! My God. So my man, Ali! Uh, this gonna go. Go. Nobody yeah. going in there hesitating. Well, there's one bait there. One bait ends up working out. Oh, oh my God! Oh! 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 That might be the knockout blow. Even the flank cannot do anything. It looks like we have a new champion here, Vitality. Are now left in the three versus one. That's a great shot from Malaysia, and that is not going to be enough. It was a French victory at the summit, only appropriate for an event whose mascot was mm -hmm. a chicken, and that's no shade on the French at all. It's literally their national animal. <laughs> anyway, joining us now to talk about vitality, chickens, and so much more, please welcome CSGO player, observer, coach, and VP of marketing for Dignitas, Heather Sapphire Garoza. What's up, girl? 
Uh, hi, everyone. It's good to be here. It's thank, exciting. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's get into it. Let's start from the top, the yeah. team that got the giant V, mm -hmm. Vitality. Because <laughs> yeah. nobody predicted this team to win. Yeah. Uh, Zaiwu played out of control, out of his mind, uh, as he helped his team win the summit. In your eyes, is he now the best French player? And what is the potential of this man? I think he is the best. I mean, I was looking at his stats the last three months. He's just right behind Simple, which, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, not an easy person to keep up with. You know, he was absolutely incredible at that event. I had the honor of observing that crazy round where he just, like, rushed a banana in overtime with, you know, he got four op kills, some of our no scopes. Like, that was just insane. You know, this guy's a young star. He's got such a bright future in front of him. And Vitality, like, props to them for the scouting. What an incredible pickup. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no kidding. Well, MBK had some choice words for his past teammates who dropped him and Apex, and he's in a position to say to them now uh, that Vitality has, by most measures, surpassed G2. From your perspective, what's the dynamic of the French scene right now and how things have actually played out between G2 and Vitality? Yeah, you know, the, the French scene, it's, it's interesting. It's always ever-evolving. Um, you know, I, I think if, if G2 would have got Zaiwu, maybe they'd be number five in the world and, and not Vitality. But um, Vitality found a great star. They believed in NBK and Apex when G2 didn't. Um, I think G2 is always going to be a contender. Um, they had some good performances at, at DreamHack yesterday. They beat Energy. They beat Renegades. Had a good set against Ents, um, I think, at um, Summit. So, you know, G2 is always going to be a contender, mm -hmm. but Vitality's got that, that young star now, and um, I think they're going to be gunning even higher than you know, top five. Feels good to be them, hey? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's always nice and fresh when when new players come in and yeah. they, they do, you know, crazy things, yeah, yeah crazy impossible things uh, another thing uh, or sorry another team that we mm -hmm. want to talk about is NRG because mm -hmm. one of those things where they were so creative in that one uh, play that they did in vertigo with a sick run boost mm -hmm. for example uh, what do you see as NRG's path uh, forward at the next events I think you know the the future for energy is that they're a contender on the international stage. Last mm -hmm. year it was really Cloud9 and Liquid, and that's all you had from North America until Energy kind of came in and near the end. And you know now they're going to be fighting right up there. Um, mm -hmm. It's no longer an anomaly to see two North American teams in the playoffs or even in the top four. And mm -hmm. and Energy, and I think they've they're, you know they're surpassing Cloud9 right now, who's who's had some struggles. So. Mm -hmm. um, I think they can, you know, be right up there, maybe not winning events, but <laughs> certainly getting top four in, in a lot of the big tournaments. Yeah, still respectable considering all the incredible teams that are still out there, still pop in. Um, I do want to talk about Ghost because Ghost put up a fight. I mean, we don't really see a lot of Ghost at big tournaments these days. So what is their place in North America with Freakazoid in the picture? Oh, gosh, I love these guys. Um, <laughs> James IRL, the coach, is fantastic. He has so much passion for this team. I think I've been watching Steel for a, a good part of a decade now. He's got incredible leadership. Um, I, I love his uh, his trash talking he's got there. It really gets his team fired up. Um, you know, these guys are the 20th in the world now, um, and they can't even play in majors, which is unfortunate, or, you know, they can't with Steel. Um, these guys are, are getting so close. You know, they lost, They were just one game away from making it into ESL 1 Cologne. Um, they've been on the grind lately. They had ESL Pro League, and while they're doing that, they've got Summit. They're going back and forth, you know, driving two hours in Los Angeles traffic. They're grinding, and, and they're going to be right up there with energy soon. I love the positivity. Yeah, it's, it's good that there's a lot of good teams. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's just, it, it feels bad when, like, you want your boys to win, but they just can't get that spot. <laughs> that one spot is out of reach. Oh, yeah, uh, speaking of my boys, oh. I love watching this next thing we're going to talk about. <laughs> Ants, easy for Ants. <laughs> Although it seemed like it, they were a bit off this event. Mm. Uh, do you suspect that maybe the Finns were not taking it too seriously? Yeah, I mean, you know, they, I'm sure they certainly wanted to win, but it's, it's one of those where these events where you can relax a bit and it's okay. You know, there's a lot of money on the line, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it's not as cutthroat as it would be, you know, playing in front of 10,000 fans. Um, so maybe they just had kind of a different mindset going into it. Um, I'm not worried for them. You know, these guys are, you know, knocking off like the Stralises of the world. So mm -hmm. um, I think they'll be fine. 
Well, I mean, obviously you've worked in every aspect of this scene. So, I mean, obviously you're seeing this from every different perspective, but what do you think the dangers are of teams maybe taking a tournament like this, like Summit, off or maybe not too seriously when they've got big tournaments like DreamHack Dallas just right after? Um, I, I think it's, it's a good thing. I wouldn't call it a danger. In fact, I'd call it like a benefit because it's a, it's a great place to like test some new strats. It's a great place to test new players um, in a more relaxed environment. Um, maybe you know, you're playing with a guy like Zai Wu and you know he, he you don't want him to be a star, but putting out on a stage um, at ESL One Cologne that might get your nerves going a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good place to kind of you know get used to to your your new team, get used to some strategies, um, and you know take a, a bit of a load off before these next big events. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And speaking of testing, actually, mm -hmm. um, the main story for the Renegades was their stand-in, oh. who played like a beast, <laughs> by the way. Do you feel like Smuya had uh, something to prove with this chance? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I saw him post on Instagram. He did a little AMA, and he said if Big would ask him to play again, he, mm -hmm. he would do it in an instant. Um, seems like he might have regretted that decision. <laughs> um, you know, he obviously hasn't found a team to play with, so um, you want to put your best out there when you have those opportunities. So mm -hmm. I think he was he's trying to show off the best he's got, and hopefully he finds a new team soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to talk about Liquid here the second again. Uh, we've spoken a lot about Liquid on the show before, and once again, they finish in second place here. But, <laughs> I mean, hey, at least they're embracing the meme, right? Uh, where do you think Liquid's heads are at as we look towards the last few events or backwards at the last few events and now before the midseason break? You know, from my point of view, second place is not a bad place to be in the <laughs> world. You first, your last, yeah. Heather. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's true, that's true. Yeah, I loved uh, Alicia's too. He said, we came, we saw, we got another second. <laughs> um, you know, those guys, those guys are going to be fine. They're doing great at DreamHack Dallas right now. I think they're they're in the semifinals. Um, hopefully, hopefully, if it's them and Ents in the end, they can take that W, especially in front of a home crowd. That's always a good story, but I'm not worried for them. They're just getting better and better. Um, you know, I think once they we square off against Astralis again, it's, it's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah, to say the least. Wait, wasn't there like a flood in their room as oh, well? God, liquid yeah. and Team Liquid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it literally just, just started pouring in the room at some <laughs> tech delays who would have thought <laughs> yeah that's the best thing about summit it's just all these uh, random things happen so yeah. uh let's talk about the atmosphere yeah. and uh this summit and what makes this event so special in the landscape of csgo um it's such a great event because you know we get to see a lot of the players' personalities. Mm -hmm. we, we usually don't get to know them as much because they're in hardcore competition mode, um, but it's fun to get some of those players on the desk. Um, it was great to hear from Twist a lot. I feel like we don't really hear from him. Um, you know, that's that's a lot of times how you fall in love with players as, as you know, as, and how fandom goes. It's like you want to know their, their personalities, not just their skills. So I think it's a great event to get to know the players. Um, the casters get to um, show off a bit. They get to be silly. They don't have to you know, dress in their suit and their tie. Um, we get to wear Princess Peach costumes <laughs> <laughs> and banana and hot dog costumes. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. Summit treats us really well. Um, they understand the community. They understand that this is a great um, it's a great break. It's a great um, gift for the fans to, to see um, what makes all these players tick, um, how they're like outside of the game. Yeah, totally. And showing off all that personality. I love that you had tweeted. It, I'm pretty sure it was you that tweeted the photo of everybody just sitting on the couch. Everyone, like people were in different costumes. You're like, basically, this sums up Summit. <laughs> yeah, this is com com at Summit, this is completely normal, wearing a banana and a hot dog costume. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. Um, there were a lot of hilarious and amazing videos produced by the BTS content team. What was mm -hmm. your personal favorite? I feel like I know what you're going to say, but I want to know what your favorite sketch was from the event. Oh, God. It's, it's by far far the Prius video it was just it was so on point I, I observe almost every event with Prius um mm -hmm. Lanus had the best quote where he's like um something about he, he's both the most interesting and boring person you will ever meet in your life and it is so, so true perfect. Um, you know, his, his bird watching, um, I'm glad they focused on that. It, um, 
really has helped them become one of the best observers in the world and glad uh, people could see uh, that's <laughs> okay. kind of obviously a lot of stuff was spoofed but okay is yeah. there actually any truth to the bird watching for real and like the graham crackers crunched into a bowl that's the a good question crackers, the graham crackers is the true part <laughs> <laughs> I thought out of it's all so of it, good. the graham crackers would for sure be the one thing uh, that was not real. The real part. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, going back to the commentating, some people were t uh, talking about that uh, there's kind of two modes that the, the CS uh, casters have, the mm. summit mode and other event mode. As yeah. a talent yourself, explain the chance of this sort of event to allow casters to flex maybe more personality than usual, because it's yeah. pretty awesome when you know you drop an f-bomb as you're watching at home and the casters are saying the exact same thing right, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. there's something yeah. about like just chanting or saying stuff with, alongside with them, yeah, yeah your fans with yeah. them yeah i mean it's nice you know most events that you go to um the casters have to show up let's say three or four hours before you go live and you know the the host has not just a script but a run of show and different topics that they're going to talk about um the analysts know what's going to happen the casters know what's going to happen um, Summit, basically, they tell you, you know, show up maybe 30 minutes before the match live. These are the four people on the couch, and there you go. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they do. And you know, they, we get to see their creativity, how they would run a show, um, and, it, and it's exciting. And we got to see all of it. All of us, like, some of it was structured, of course. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, discussing the new map that... <laughs> the players <laughs> were playing. What was it? Hor Horizon Horizontigo. Horizontigo. Yes. Oh, Horizontigo. And the, the video <laughs> is just perfect. Of a, that was hilarious. The smoke grenade just lighting it up to the, down the hallway. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Um, Heather, what is it like for you to be, because you do a lot of these events. You observe so much. So how do you balance your life of being this top tier observer at all these major events and then also your role with Dignitas? It's a, uh, it's a lot. Mm. Um, you know, I've got some very creative places where I take time to sleep, you know, on trains and, mm. and planes. I'm very good at sleeping on planes now because I, I have to, <laughs> um, it's, it's a grind. Um, you know, you know, thank you to Prius. Who's like the best observer partner ever. Um, he's great at balancing. Hey, I've got a meeting. I cannot observe this map. You have to do this map. Um, you know, it's just figuring out that work-life balance. Uh, you know, I'll call observing, observing, <laughs> observing my life, um, and Dignitas is my work. Um, I, I love them both so much. Mm. Um, I true, I believed in esports for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, many of those years, many other pe people didn't believe in esports, and mm -hmm. I'm not ready to give either of those up. So I'm just gonna keep grinding and. Um, it's just a lot of fun. I'm it's, living yeah, my dream. It's worth it. I mean, and your girls are doing so well, too. Um, can you give us a little update on where they're at and where we can watch them next? Yes. Oh, I'm so excited with our team. So we've been invited to DreamHack Valencia. It's a $100,000 tournament um, for women's teams. One of the biggest prize pots out of WASG, outside of WESG. Um, they're grinding hard. Um, they're going to be boot camping out of our new headquarters in Newark um, coming up. So we'll be doing that for a couple weeks leading into DreamHack. Um, they're playing in ESCA Maine right now. And hopefully, hopefully we'll keep advancing. We've got the major qualifiers this weekend. Obviously, that's the end goal to get into a major. Um, we, obviously, we're a little far off, but we're going to keep trying our best. Wow, yeah. very yeah. impressive. Yeah. 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 Uh, before we let you go, we want you to quickly pick your brain on a few general topics, starting mm -hmm. with the move of, I don't know how to say his name, Boomish, B O O M B L 4. Yeah, I think to Navi. Yeah. 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 Any thoughts uh, on that? Good for him. That's exciting. Um, I was feeling like a sense of nostalgia the other day when Edward when they announced it about Edward. Mm -hmm. I was going back and watching old CS 1.6 videos yep. when Navi, when I am. It's, it's really sad. It's, it's the end of the era. Um, but, you know, they're trying to crack into that top two, number one spot. Um, maybe it's a, a move similar to Zywu and Vitality. Um, I think he's a good player. He's done well at majors. Um, and hopefully they have a, a bright future together. Yeah, um, love to see it. Finally, DreamHack Dallas is obviously happening right now. right now. So what are your initial impressions from the tournament so far? Well, um, you know, I, I want a liquid win, really. <laughs> I want a liquid win on home turf. They need it. <laughs> 
they're in the semifinals. They're looking sharp. Um, I'm feeling it this time. Um, I think I think it's going to be them and Entz. Um, you know, Entz has been in the U.S. for you know a few weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think they're great. I'm an Ents fan, but I want them to lose this one, and I want it to, Liquid <laughs> to take it home. <laughs> I'm an Ents fan, too, and I also yeah. want Team Liquid to win. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they would be considered the underdog, even though they always make top two. They would still be the underdog in that moment. I yes. just feel like the buildup has been so long, right? Like, mm -hmm. we've waited so long for this that, like, there needs to be something, something epic that happens when they win, like it rain coming happen. down from the sky or yeah. something yeah. inside, <laughs> yep. wherever they are. Like, the stages have, like, rain <laughs> pouring down. That would be something special. Yeah. For sure. Sapphire, as much as I'd love to keep chatting with you all day about all of this, actually, our time is up, but we've got to let you go. Thank you so much for calling in, and hopefully we'll see you in person soon. Yes, thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Oh man, I love that girl so much. Uh, Zurich, let's wrap this bad boy up with just a, a few minutes here. I need to know who your MVP was for Summit. It would definitely be Zaiwu ah. from Fidelity. He played like, um, I mean, as Sapphire said, like simple numbers. That is crazy. He was just fragging like a monster. Yeah. And he's also pretty young. I think he's only like 18. So the future is bright for this kid. I feel the same way about you, Zurich. I'm old. <laughs> um, I'm, then you're I, supposed to say, I feel the same way about you, and oh. it was supposed to be a thing. Oh, but okay. okay Sorry. Fine. It wasn't part of the script. We Sorry, don't, guys. We don't need to discuss our ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Don't Google it. <laughs> um, let's talk about a couple more things here, because obviously this is FPS. We want to encompass everything, at least mm -hmm. get our, our claws in a little bit of it before we get to the weekend here, because there have been a few things. One that I want, thing I want to talk about is this whole Apex Legends tournament. It's going to be the first official Apex Legends tournament yep. run by Face It. But something a little concerning is that it's going to be on public servers. They don't have dedicated servers for this. Yeah, that is not really a professional tournament. Oh. It's, it's very weird because, you know, like that would be the same thing as, let's say, in the NBA Finals if Golden State was playing the Raptors, but instead if they play they with... Are. They are. But if they were playing in that style, that would mean that, you know, like rappers would be playing with five random players and then trying yes, to yes, compare yes. like how many s points they can make. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it little... doesn't it doesn't make sense as a competitive standpoint, right? Yeah. Until they get custom lobbies, that's when Apex is gonna be a real competitive game. Because well, it's it's just not the same. Do you feel like it's odd that this this in itself is sanctioned? Like this is mm -hmm. what because this is the only way Apex Legends tournaments have been played up until this point. This yep. has been approved, this is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But for it to be a legitimate esports it definitely needs to have its own dedicated servers but then on the other side of it we can argue that well I mean most points win so you're the best team you'll win no matter what anyway yeah but the thing with BR games especially is there's so much randomness right mm -hmm. so it's like you could have a game where you would drop in your favorite spot and there would be a hundred all the the rest of the players will be in that same spot as you landed but then yeah. there would be games where it would be incredibly slow and then you would just place high mm -hmm. so it's like Having that randomness, especially with like pubs and like, mm. I mean, all of the public players are not going to be as good as the pros. Like, that's true. In a one v one duel, a pro, one pro can always outmatch one squad. Yeah. Like, guarantee they can, you know, one v three most of oh, the regular easy. people. Yeah. So, it's like you on every day just playing Apex. Yeah, a little bit, but uh, you know, you do know what I mean. It's super I tough. I know for sure what you mean, especially when like if you compare this to PUBG. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they have their own dedicated servers. Yep. All like every team knows where every other team is going to drop, and they respect that, and yep. they let that happen because everyone needs to get their stuff. They need to accrue what they need to accrue, mm -hmm. and then they start the rotations. And that's yep. really a respect for the other teams. It's a respect for the professionalism strategy. of the sport. It's respect for strategy. So yep. this goes all out the window with Apex. Yeah, because it's so random, and there's yeah. no strategy. You drop, you frag. A as hard as you can, you hear gunshots, you follow it, mm. so you get more frags, and it's just a cycle of that. Mind you, it's so much fun to watch as a spectator <laughs> to just see pros like out fragging <laughs> nine people, and just it's just constant action because they are following. So I think from an audience perspective and Twitch especially, it's so much easier to follow it and yes. watch because a lot of the pro games, as we saw in PUBG, especially even in Fortnite, it has the same thing where everybody stalls because they want to survive the longest, they yeah, want to, you know, be the be in the top ten, so yeah, they yeah. try not to fight as much, and we don't see that in tournaments like this because everybody mm. just goes ham. Like, oh, I have a pistol, let me kill three people, and they can. 
Right, and they will, so yes. you will be watching and enjoying every moment of it. That's is right. What you're saying. I, yes. I'd still be watching. I want to know, though, are you still going to be enjoying COD now that it's going cross-platform, or are you going to be enjoying it even more because you're a PC gamer? Because mm -hmm. this is supposed to be cross-platform, PS4, Xbox, and PC, but to me, it just doesn't make any sense because if you're on PC, you are superior. You, like... If just from being in esports for this amount of time, mm -hmm. you see the difference between console gamers and PC gamers, and the tactile responses that you have as a PC gamer are just much faster yep. than with a controller. So how do you see this playing out? Um, hopefully, they'll do the same thing as what Fortnite's doing, mm. where if you queue up by yourself, if you're a PC player, you will get queued up with other PC players, mm -hmm. right? As simple as that. But then if you have a friend that's also is, that is in a console, mm -hmm. then you get into like a mixed lobby. Okay. So something like that would work. The main uh, disadvantage is the frame rates in, fi in fighting games, sorry, in FPS games, yeah. it's very important to have 144 hertz because mm -hmm. the differences in like putting your crosshair in someone's head is literally within those like the the smoothness of your of your movement and yeah. and your screen. Yeah. So most consoles are capped at 60 frames. Yes. And you know like PCs there's 244 hertz monitors. I don't think your eyes can even see like that fast. <laughs> uh, but that will be the main difference, right. uh, especially in 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 COD, uh, this new upcoming one. Mm -hmm. So unless they cap uh, the the frame rates for the PC players. Mm -hmm. The PC players will just have the advantage for the for like the entire duration of this existence of this COD. Well, that's <laughs> so true. And then I don't know if how we're gonna see this reflect onto the actual esports scene. Like, there's no way that can work. I mean, the esports scene that we see in COD is all console based. Mm -hmm. So, do you see them making a shift because these players are used to console? They have to stay console. Or do you think we're just gonna break off? They'll be PC and they'll be console, and we'll watch both. I don't think they'll do PC. COD mm -hmm. has been like a staple in the console genre. It's kind of like Halo. Like, even if Halo comes out on PC, there might be a small competitive scene, but you know, like there won't be a backing from like Microsoft or or other big orgs. You know, right. like covering it. COD is kind of the same way. It's such like a console-based. Uh, game yeah, that, yeah. and everybody played it in console. Even I played it in console. And you know, you're and a I, PC. But that's you right. Love your PC. Yeah, because PC daily. is superior. Okay. Whatever, man. You know I'm a console ride or die. I'm going to stop you right there because that's all the time we have for our show. I cannot believe it's been already a half an hour already talking this. Thank you so much to Sapphire. Thank you to Zurich. And thank you for watching. Next week, we're kicking things off with an LCS and LEC summer split preview with G2's grabs. And, of course, I'll be yelling with Brody in Unmuted daily. Until then, I hope you have an amazing weekend. We'll see you next time.